Yeah. Okay, guys, and welcome back to my kitchen. A few moments ago, I was doing my purple harvest and I showed you all the goodies that I was able to um, get out of my backyard. And if, and if you remember, most of those items were actually from a bag, a grow bag. So again, just to show you and prove to you over and over again, you don't need a yard per se to have yourself a garden. Get yourself some of these really nice um, grow bags, a box, you know, a crocus bag, uh, what a, a box, um, a, a bucket, and plant something. Okay, so what am I gonna do? I am going to prepare these vegetables by getting them washed, scrubbed, and ready to go. Then I'm gonna start making a couple of dishes using exactly what I picked up from the backyard. So the idea is to kind of show you um, that just by planting your own stuff, that you can actually make a three course meal plus a drink. So this is my Purple Harvest Farm to Table dishes that I'm making with you and camera, um, you know, next few minutes. So I'm gonna wash those carrots and potatoes and get right back to you. So what do we need to do first? My potatoes are already scrubbed and washed. All I need to do is to place them on a piece of foil paper, place them in the oven at 350 degrees to bake until it's cooked all the way through. Nothing added, no salt, no pepper, no oil, nothing is added to those sweet potatoes. Just place them in the oven and let them bake away until they are nice and tender. And all I've done is just to um, remove the skin of my baked potato. See how pretty that is? Look at that beautiful color. So remove the skin from my baked potatoes and I'm gonna use this in two ways. So I'm gonna use half of it as a mashed potato, typical mashed potato, no, no big deal. And the other one I'm using to make hummus. So let's go. Okay, so for the hummus, I'm just gonna put some of the mashed potato into my blender like so. Okay, then I'm gonna stick a bit of um, garlic in there. And then I'm gonna add to that my coconut milk in there. Add to that my roasted chickpea that I did earlier. I'm gonna leave some for garnish. Squeeze of a lemon. And I'm gonna to add to that a zest of a lemon as well. And then to add to that, I'm adding some olive oil. Put that in my blender and let that one just whisk away. Okay. Just need some salt and pepper. And that's it, your hummus is done. So what I'm gonna do is just to pour it out into a container like so. Okay. Getting a nice, getting a nice sweetness from the potato, and you know, 
the zest from the lemon it's, and it's nice and creamy because of the coconut milk it is awesome and you just set this aside you know put it away in the refrigerator or if you have a company over they can be you know enjoying this whilst you are finish off finishing off your main meal they could be enjoying this with some crackers or some plantain chips like what i had and um, while you're talking while you're finishing off your main course so from farm to table from purple harvest to table i'm making a three course meal and this would be the first one. This would be your appetizer. Everybody can sit down and enjoy whilst they wait for the main course, which is what we're gonna get into next. And then the for main, I am roasting my carrots. So I already washed them, uh, placed them on a foil paper, added some seasoning, salt and pepper, garlic, um, a bay leaf, some fresh thyme, and some other herbs with a splash of avocado oil, place it in the oven to roast until tender. Now we're gonna move on to making that um, nice uh, sticky, zesty uh, base for my roasted carrots. So first thing I needed was the juice of the carrots. Tops. So you saw that I um, blended that out into my processor to get me this nice green juice. This is the, the tops of the carrots that gave me this juice. And all I'm going to do is to add some more fresh um, herbs to it. Um, uh, lemon, you know, zest and squeeze of a lemon, um, some garlic, a little bit of sweetener and a little bit of um, salt and pepper and um, spice. Um, you know, spicy, hot pepper of some sort. And that's it. That's what's going to give me this nice quick sauce. So in my saucepan, I'm literally going to combine everything. These are already washed. These are from my backyard. So I'm just going to put all that together. And this is the beauty again of having herbs in... Uh, in your yard because you can use them at will you know you can use as much or as little because they are just available in your yard so I'm just gonna cut up the garlic a little bit and then I'm just gonna squeeze my my, my lemon and all I do is just put my hands over it to collect the seeds get rid of the discard the seeds Okay, now my green liquid, I'm just gonna to add to my stove top to simmer down and get to a nice sticky consistency. And at that stage, I'm gonna start adding uh, salt and pepper and some sort of sweetener to get it nice and sticky and delicious. Okay, so I'm just gonna add some salt, pepper, just normal black pepper. This is my little dried habanero that I'm gonna add to that. And all I need now is a little bit of sweetener. And I don't use a lot of butter, but every now and then, if I do, I'm using this um, Earth Balance one that is actually soy free. This is vegan butter. So you see, brand new, I haven't used it yet. So I'm just gonna add like a uh, tapers. Just allow that now to just melt down and simmer down and get thicken up for my carrots. Okay, so my carrots, all roasted, looking so pretty. Right, kind of trying to get a little bit of a design. I refer to it as the uh, the Hasselback, you know, so just kind of slice them across, like so. It gives a bit of a texture, shape. And, and looks. My zesty um, sauce is ready. And that's basically, I'm just brush it on. I'm gonna brush it on. 
and then put it back, right back in the oven. So that's finish off the cook. And then the second to last dish of the day is just to smash my potatoes or mash my potatoes. So, not doing anything fancy. So I'm going to test to see if it needs some salt and if it does, I'll add it. But other than that, it's just mashed potatoes with a little butter. When I had my potatoes to roast, I did not add any season at all. I just literally put them into the, um, into the oven in foil paper to roast. But it doesn't need a lot of salt, a little tip of salt just to kind of, you know, enhance the sweetness of everything. And also don't, don't forget that there are several types of purple potatoes. You will find uh, purple potatoes where the outside is like white, but the inside is purple, you know? So you might find a purple potato where the outside is purple and the inside is white. So this particular one, why I love it so much is both the outside and the inside is in fact purple. Same thing with my carrots, both the outside and the inside is purple. So the purple potato is very good, very good for you. Um, it's better than white potato, definitely. Um, it gives you the calcium, like, like we said, the, um, the antioxidants, the calcium, potassium, um, magnesium, fiber. It helps us with our digestive system. It helps us with our gut. It helps us with, you know, for some of us who are trying to lose a little bit of weight, um, so it's a very versatile potato. You can, you can cook with it. You can bake with it, like we've seen there. You can make an ice cream um, with this potato. Um, you can make turn into a French fry, typical of what most people tend to do. Um, you can roast them up. You know, you can boil them. You can have them raw. When I was doing my raw diet um, a few, few um, you know, last year sometime, I actually just spiralized the sweet potato and added um, to, um, to my different vegetables and stuff, and it was perfectly fine. So you can eat it that way as well. Obviously, make sure you get a nice, fresh, um, not too old potato. So, you know, it's a root vegetable, so after a while, if it stays too long in the soil, it will get a little bit more like a yam and, you know, get really hard. But if you get a really nice, tender, um, fresh sweet potato, yes, you can actually um, eat it raw. So, very versatile. And again, I showed you how I planted two small potatoes that I bought from the store um, into a bag and got me quite a few potatoes out of it into a bag. Same thing for the carrots. I planted a few seeds in a bag and I counted over 28 carrots that are full size and about eight that are smaller size. It's a lot of um, carrots just coming from a few seeds. So again, go out there and, and, and um, you know get your hand dirty and plant something in your buckets, in your bags, in a box, or in the ground if you have a garden. Okay, so my sweet potato is smashed and we're good to go, All right? So no issues there, very easy. Take a quick taste of it, see. Yep, it is nothing. It's a smashed potato, not a big deal. Okay, put this to the side. Now I'm gonna finish off my salad that I started earlier. I was spiralizing um, some carrots that I'm gonna make into a salad. Remember that those purple um, snap peas that I picked earlier? Just gonna add those to my salad. They're very tender, they're just delicious. I just wish everyone could just plant these in their garden. They're just absolutely delicious. So again, I'm eating them raw. And yes, the seeds inside are in fact green. I'm going to add the other green ones that I picked as well. And that will give a bit of a contrast to color for my salad. And then if you remember, I picked my chickpea, fresh chickpea. Got me some fresh herbs. And then all I'm gonna do now to the salad is just to 
add a zest of a lemon and the juice. Because when you're making a salad, and I know that we all like to have our salad dressing, and that's okay for now and then, but one, make your own, which you can. But sometimes you don't even have to go that far. You just squeeze a little bit of lemon juice, some salt and pepper. Mm, quite frankly, that's your dressing, right? But if you want to add more things, that's okay. So for me, this time around, it's gonna be very simple. Just my lemon, like I just did, and a little salt and pepper, and that's it spiralized carrots, all of the snap peas that I picked from the back, some fresh herbs, lemon, salt and pepper, and that's it. That's your salad. I am going to do a cold press carrot juice using my purple carrots, obviously, and um, it is delicious. There's nothing else in there except for the carrots. That's it. <laughs> And it's delicious. It is so sweet and refreshing. So I have that stored away in the refrigerator for, um, for later. We have come to the conclusion of our meal. So I'm now going to plate up the main course of the meal. Roasted purple carrots. First thing I'm going to do is to put down some of my... Um, mashed potatoes. Then I'm just gonna take one of my nice, beautiful glazed oops, carrots. And just put her down just like so. So I have plated up my beautiful glazed purple carrots and served it over my nice smooth mashed purple mashed potatoes. And for garnish, just use the green tops of the carrot as a bit of a garnish and some lemon wedge. Just in case you need a bit more zest um, for this dish, I just added a bit of a wedge of a lemon there um, as, um, for, for you to use, but also as a, as a decor. So, so ladies and gentlemen, that's it. That's the end of the show. That's the end of um, my purple harvest to farm to table um, type of um, meal today. We got some, uh, so we went outside and we got some purple potatoes, beautiful potatoes, and we used it two ways. Then mashed some just for this particular dish, but we also use some of that mashed potato um, with some chickpea, lemon zest, salt and pepper, lemon juice, and make a purple hummus. So that's your starter. Your starter is going to be the hummus. That's going to be the starter, which is um, purple. Usually when you do get your hummus, it's normally chickpea is the star of the show. This time round, chickpea took a back seat and the purple um, potato took the front row. So she took the lead and the chickpea took the back of roll basically, but it still is a nice combination. It is creamy. It is nice. You do have a little bit of, of um, olive oil in there, zest of lemon, and some roasted chickpea on top and some herbs as your garnish. Nice. We also made a nice purple um, carrot salad, which is basically spiralizing some of our carrots, adding some of our um, purple snap pea, some of the green snap pea, salt and pepper, lemon zest, lemon juice, walla walla. That's your purple carrot salad. For the main course, we made a roasted purple carrots that was um, brushed with a nice, sweet, zesty, spicy um, uh, sauce. And that was served over the mashed potatoes. 
And let's remember that the zesty sauce for the carrot, we use the carrot tops as the base, that nice green base, and just added um, a lot of herbs and zest of a lemon and lemon uh, juice, salt and pepper, bit of spicy, and some sweetener to give it that sticky, spicy, zesty um, sauce um, glaze for these carrots. And um, this is what the plate looks like. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, so again, I don't know how often I'm going to have to say this to you to ask you to encourage you to start your own garden. Because these items that I made today came all from my garden. And from there, I was able to make a three course meal plus a drink. You can't get better than that coming from your backyard. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being in this space and thank you for watching um, my, my, my programs. And I do hope that I'm, in, that I'm somehow inspiring you. I do hope that I am giving you some sort of um, information, knowledge, um, encouragement, um, confidence to go out there and start your own garden and start eating plant-based food and start recognizing that you can prepare um, uh, plant-based uh, food in any way. You can prepare any kind of vegetable anyhow you, you choose to. You don't have to go to the meat. So I'm here to, one, encourage you to stay away from man's food and to eat the food that the Creator asks us to eat. It is part of our covenant and we must must obey that covenant, especially in the times that we're living in right now. Then two, start your own garden. Things are going to start happening in this world where you will not be able to go to the supermarket and get food off the shelves. You have to learn how to be self-sufficient and start preparing to, 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 to feed your family and friends and neighbors. Um, to, to be able to know how to provide for your family, provide for friends and family, provide for, um, for your neighbors if, uh, if needs be. So for that reason, you must start a garden and you don't need a big space. You don't need a big yard, you know? So there's no reason whatsoever why you can't do it. If I can do it, so can you. So. This is to encourage you to go ahead and plant, start your own garden and start eating plant-based um, food. So I'm in this space to kind of show you that it's not that difficult. Really, change the mindset. Once you change the mindset, you get excited and you start changing and, and, and playing around with recipes. Someone asked me the other day, Rissy, how do you know about this stuff? How do you sort this item? Because once you're in this space, you have no choice but to research and find items that suit your belief system. That's it. It's as simple as that, you know? And, and, and I also want to warn all of my, my plant-based um, followers who are well deep into, you know, eating on a plant-based diet to be very careful and to be extremely vigilant because People are coming into our space now and providing food for us because it's convenient. Remember, this is why this is how we got here in the first place, because of convenience. Now they're coming into our space and they are providing plant-based food for us conveniently in boxes and bags and this and that and whatever. But you must, ladies and gentlemen, you must read those labels to see exactly what's in them. You must read those labels because they are hiding stuff from you that they are putting into some of those pre-packaged food and meals for you that you're not aware of. When you go to a restaurant, you are taking a risk that they might be using something in the background that you're not aware of. You're gonna have to go, you know, if you have to go, you need to ask questions. And if you feel uncomfortable, just don't eat there again. 
If you, you know, cause your tummy, your body is going to speak to you. If you eat something and it doesn't sit right, your body is going to reject it. And that's your body talking to you and telling you that whatever you just ate, uh, uh, don't like it. Don't eat it again. So I'm just warning you that even though some of us are a little bit more, a little bit more advanced than the, than the average person in this plant-based space, we still have to use our eyes, our ears, and look and listen to what they're doing because everybody now is coming into this plant-based uh, industry because so many of us have moved away from meat and now they're going to start giving us items that they deem to be uh, convenient, but they're putting other items in there that they're not telling you about. But we have got to be the eyes and the ears for us. This is us. We, this is our being. This is our universe. You are responsible for this. And if you decide, you know, you, you, you agree as to what it is that you want to put in your body, then you must be vigilant and check out everything that you eat to make sure it is agrees with your belief system. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave you and I thank you for being in this space and thank you for, for um, listening to me. Thank you for watching my videos. And as I said before, I do hope that I have in some way encouraged you, in some way giving you that little nudge of confidence to go out there and do it, either to start eating a plant base or to start, you know, starting your own garden. But whatever it is, I am happy that I was able to instill something in you to pass on some sort of energy onto you that you will start doing what is right for you and your family. So peace and blessings to you and let us leave by giving all thanks and praises to the Most High, the Creator, the Source, whatever you want to refer to Him as, the one who made us, the one who gave us life. The one who woke us up this morning, let us give him thanks and praise for this wonderful planet and this wonderful life that we live in, this wonderful thing called a breath, the breath of life. Let us enjoy it and let us go out there and do the best we can to live a righteous, prosperous life. Peace and blessings to you. Peace and blessings to you and your family. 